Before I get started, I wanted to talk to you about my goals as an educator and why I got into education. I started out in my early 20s as an activist. I still am, but I was a lot more gung-ho. I organized unions at my job, and I really wanted to give power to the people. And I ended up majoring in community development at Portland State University, and I focus on economic, economic and housing policy, and that's where I got my undergraduate. And going through that process of learning how to develop communities, I started realizing how important education and literacy was because we gain a lot of our knowledge through what we read and hear from others. And if you can't read or really understand what others are saying, we can't necessarily progress or have our needs met. Oh no. Hold on one second. So, um, oh, I'm glad that this is up here because that's my second slide. <laughs> so I, I think about um, how I wanted to get into education because I wanted to work on those literacy skills that you need in order to access information. And then of course, why are we giving these literacy skills to kids? Because I want them to change or create or develop a new value system. So they can value the community that they're in and value themselves in what they have to offer the community as well and have a place and a part in it. So I got this quote from Gandhi <laughs> and I love this quote. I, I, I read it often because I think about why I got into community development and why I got into education because I wanted to work on those values and this is the step-by-step -step process in order to create values. We have to have positive thoughts because our thoughts will eventually lead to words and we need to know those words to communicate. A lot of times you have arguments because you don't have the words to express how you feel. Um, and those words become your behavior your behaviors become your habits. Your habits eventually become your values. And as a teacher, I like to start working with our thoughts and our words because eventually it'll build up upon themselves. So, when I was asked to talk about goal setting, <laughs> I actually said, really, to myself, goal setting? Oh my gosh, because as a teacher, I have IEP goals to write, I have to do my student learning goals, professional development goals, professional growth goals, your PLC goals, your daily lesson goals, and in a way, I sort of began to dread thinking about goals, because goals mean deadlines, and deadlines are stressors. So I thought, when I work with kids, and when I'm setting goals, I have to realize the importance of setting goals again. Why do we set goals? So on the next slide, I have five of my favorite reasons on why we actually set goals. Because goals help you be who you want to be. Because goals give your life purpose because goals boost your confidence, goals make you self-reliance, and goals prove that you can make a difference. We need those reminders, especially when we have a lot of goal deadlines as teachers, why we actually set goals. And these are just five reasons. There's numerous out there, hundreds. I'm sure everyone here could think of a different reason on why we set goals. A lot of the time we are pressured to create smart goals, smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, there should be a reason behind it, and it should be time-based. And as I study more about executive functioning skills and I work with our kids, I started to resent smart goals. Smart goals might be good for me as a teacher when I'm doing my professional growth goals. It might be great when I'm creating student learning goals. 
but when I'm asking a student to make a goal, I don't know smart goals are the best goals to create. And then I found this poster when I was looking up smart goal images to put on this slide, and I thought this is the poster I need to put up because it shows you how ridiculous smart goals can be for our students. So a bad goal, according to this poster, is I want good grades this year. And then the good goal is I want to make a 93 or better in reading <laughs> by May this year. Here's another smart goal. I want the measurable aspect. I will get a lot of good grades. And I want to make no more than one C each nine weeks. I want you to think about your kids. If they are setting this goal and you ask them to be specific and measurable, attainable. I want to make an A on seven out of the 10 tests I take. The reason? I want to improve my grades because reading is important in every subject and in the real world. I like the reason. Goals show me should have a reason. And the last one, the time-based goal, uh, the time-based aspect of the goal is I want to make a 93 or better in reading by May 30th this year. So why are goals, smart goals, not necessarily the best goals to set with students with learning disabilities, emotional disturbances, um, the list goes on and on. It's because a lot of them lag those executive functioning skills to actually understand what attainable and time means. Because, yeah, I want to get all A's by the end of this year. Is it realistic? Is it reasonable? I know it's kind of sad, and I don't mean to depress, but I don't want to set my kids up for failure by creating goals that they're not going to reach because of their learning disabilities. I want to set goals that they can work on continually and make them lifelong goals. And another idea I thought of why these goals don't work is because often when you're sitting in a class, a student might not know where to start with their goals and they copy from their classmates. And they might not realize that they're not personal goals. They're not taking ownership or accountability for these goals. And at times they're creating really unrealistic goals for themselves. So I'm going to go into character traits and using character traits as your goal. And I'm glad that you guys had a chance to write the personality traits that you've written down. Because this summer I took a training with Gear Up because they're rolling out a new survey to the Roosevelt Cluster, uh, middle school and above. And they're asking, as part of the survey, to quickly name 10 attributes about yourself <coughs> as part of the survey. And as an adult, I struggled with that. I felt like I was lagging behind everybody else. I didn't know what to write. And I thought to myself, if I'm struggling coming up with 10 goals or 10 character traits, how would my students fare when they're taking the survey? Do they have the words to use? Do they understand what a character trait is? Because often we teach character traits in one week as part of the core curriculum, right? and you move on to the next aspect. Now we're gonna go to inferencing. We're done with character traits. <laughs> then we're gonna go to mood and tone, and then we're gonna go to plot. So the reason why I like to use character traits, they're broader, they're not smart goals in the acronymic sense. I think they're smarter goals because they're lifelong goals, they're goals that students can really see development and they can really work on and communicate, and you can embed in all aspects of the curriculum that you use, right? And I think about SMART goals, or I mean, character trait goals, because they develop this pro-social values. And that's my goal as a teacher, is I want to create students who understand their values and their value set, because I want to make it into their habits. And I, wanna, I want them to take ownership of their lives and have better lives because they know the abilities and the traits they possess in a positive way. Um, why I like using character traits as goal setting at this point, and you can see my wall of courage, courageous being a character trait, 
um, is because it exposes them to the society, the positive society of values we have. What do we look for when we look for a community member, a neighbor, a friend, a partner, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father? It also gives us opportunity to think and discuss moral issues. And it creates those experiences in your classroom that helps you take the perspective of another. It gives you a chance to step outside of yourself and see, oh, this is how others might possess this goal. And it might be in a different way than the way I possess it. So these are some possible ideas of self-characteristics. And I like to use them when I'm working with my class. And I'm going to go into kind of how we define those characteristics, because we use them all the time. But do we really go and define what they are? We say, oh, great, you're being very optimistic, assuming that they know what optimistic means. Or I see that you're being respectful. That's a word that we use a lot. What does respectful mean? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? So I think about using these character traits as goals, as attainable goals, as lifelong goals, because you could work on being optimistic your whole life, and you could revisit it. And what I also like about these goals is you could read novels or newspaper articles and find people and characters that possess these goals. And that way you can embed it in every one of your literacy-based lesson plans. And it's not just one day, let's talk about goals, we'll come back in 10 weeks and revisit your goals. You can really incorporate it into every day. You can work with your general education teacher to make sure that they're embedding some of these values and character traits and goal setting ideas into their lesson plans. And when we talk about a positive um, mindset, a growth mindset, we're talking about all of these traits we're talking about uh, you're doing a great job being courageous. You know, how can, how can this character in our novel be more courageous? You could really go into those inferential questions that our kids really struggle on and really have them understand those deeper level literacy concepts that seem so hard to teach by comparing their own lives and their own abilities to the characters that they're reading about. So I like Y charts. I really like Y charts because it's the, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it hear like? Because, um, sound like? <laughs> um, because we need to really work on defining those goals with kids. Another thing about this is that you could work in a small group, a whole class, or, large, or individual. This year, our school adopted uh, five character traits to represent our building. It's in the back of a calendar, the last page of the calendar. I've not seen a poster for this, but I think about their great, great goals. The character traits that we want to instill in our kids are persevering, dynamic, inquisitive, excellent, and respectful. But I have not yet seen one teacher embed any of these character traits into their lesson, but it's possible. And through goal setting and class goal setting or individual goal setting, we can actually put that in our core curriculum and talk about it every day. So you could create school goals like our school did. You could work with a small group and you could just focus on maybe one goal a week, one goal a day, one goal a month or a set of goals. They could be vocabulary words, because often we take vocabulary words that are literally in the text, but we never talk about inferential vocabulary words. Like if there is a character who is courageous, why not learn how to spell it? Why not dissect that word? And why not find those qualities into the different people or the different situations that you find in the text? 